Hey guys, welcome back Trip and Farm for Poppy. I'm your host, Trip Coach, dropping knowledge bombs on all Forex Shark related projects. In today's videos, we got those bombs dropped left and right. Bombs over Baghdad in this video because it was a live stream from a Trip to Wealth, aka uh, Crypto Knight. So he invited me on his live stream, which he does every Wednesday at uh, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern, and 6 a.m. Cambodian time. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I want to thank him for that. And want you guys to definitely check that out. I'm going to try to like pop in and listen to those in the morning. Um, disclaimer during the video, I was actually at the gym. So my normal training time, I wake up about four 30, then, uh, go run and then hit the gym between five 45, six to seven. So, um, there was some heavy breathing and some clanging of weights in the background. It's not what you think <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, it is what you think now, cause it was exercise and I was at the gym. So apologize for uh, some of that in there because I didn't realize it was coming in so loud and clear. But in the video, he covers some questions about who I am, why I'm so committed to Drip, what are my thoughts on Triple DR, uh, do I support other community projects, why am I focused on the empowering of the impoverished side, and also, of course, Change360. So if you want to get Drip Coach uncut, unfiltered with uh, questions just coming in real time, um, even though even in these videos, I don't actually do any edits. That's why I misspeak and stuff like that. I give you guys exactly who I am, raw, uncut, unfiltered. And um, yeah, that's just kind of how I go about it. So you'll hear that exact same thing from Crypto Night and the Drip to Wealth uh, live stream. So without further ado, I will bring you that audio clip. Bruce Gordon, welcome to the call. Let me see if your coach is still there. If he stepped away for a sec, your coach, can you hear me? Let me try to send him a DM really quick. Let me say, yeah, I'll go. I can hold down for a minute if you guys want. There's been a fair amount that's uh, been going on this week. We've seen incredible community projects still continue to grow and thrive, which I love seeing. And then we've uh, we've heard a lot about Plinko. Uh, I've seen mixed reviews on what people, I think every single person thinks it looks fantastic and maybe the uh, community can say yay or nay, but it seems like most people are slightly less excited than they are about drip drop draw. I saw a, uh, a post on uh, drip coaches actually that he said 11% would prefer Plinko over DDD. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not surprised by that either. Honestly, I'm really not. Nope. I'm, I'm not surprised by that. Were you surprised by the results? Did you think, was it higher than you thought, or you were shocked I that thought, they chose Triple D? Yeah, no, I I think I was expecting it to be like a sixty forty because there is still a lot of people that are heavy into the animal farm. Yeah, and I think it makes sense for filling up uh, the pig pen. Uh, rewards, especially since so many people have expressed concerns over the big pen rewards continuing to decline each week, uh, even though I think it's been fairly clear as to why. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think I was a little bit surprised on that because it does show a clear roadmap to increasing that that part of it. I think so too. I, to your point, did I could I come up with? Uh... An approximation of the mix before the poll, I probably would have been wrong, but I definitely would have said the majority of the people definitely were looking forward to uh, Triple D over uh, Plinko. Yeah, and, and I'm actually uh, curious to think, because we're going to get into that too with uh, Drip Coach. So I think I got him back on as a speaker. Drip Coach, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Got you loud and clear. Fantastic, my friend. Fantastic. Let's do this, if it's okay with you. Um, I know who you are, right? Because you've actually been on Twitter spaces with us just last year with a group of other speakers. But today we're actually going to have you on as the guest speaker, because today is really going to be all about you. And we're going to get into um, your project, which has changed 360. And then we're just going to tap into your background and uh, why are you so committed to the trip ecosystem and, and then get your thoughts on triple D and the overall sentiment in the community. And I really do think that you're the best person for this type of discussion. And, and here's why coach, um, personally, and I think I've said this to you on many occasions, 
personally, I really enjoy the type of content that you deliver. And part of it is because we have very similar backgrounds, right? So my background is in accounting and finance. So I'm really all about the numbers, right? Because the numbers really tell a story, a story. And that story is very hard to argue, right? Because the data doesn't lie, right? You've got historical data that kind of tells a story about what to expect in the future. And again, what I appreciate about your approach is you give it to everybody raw and uncut like this is the data hard to argue it you may not like what i have to say but this is the data and the other piece of it is you stand on the data amidst a host of criticism right so it takes like a strong person to be able to have the confidence to continue to deliver that to deliver that type of content because you know it's supported by the data and the bigger picture is you're doing it for the right reasons which is to make people aware and protect them as investors and then educate them on how they should be looking at the data so we're going to get into all of that man. we are so i'm happy to have you as a guest speaker and again, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, can you spend a couple of minutes to kind of introducing yourself? Sure thing. Thanks for the opportunity. Hope you guys can hear me well. Yeah, um, we can. Yeah. So, <laughs> so in short, apparently I'm the most polarized drip content creator right now. <laughs> You're like Kanye so. West of DeFi. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and interestingly enough, I actually have another video coming out where I compared my views to some of the top content creators in the space, and people are looking for this information. So again, like you just said, the numbers don't lie. So there is yeah. a small handful of people that don't like the numbers and they want to argue it, and I get that. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the views and you look at engagement, I'm outperforming Dryptopian, Crypto Kings, Barter Town, Son of Breezy, right? So yeah. why are people coming if that's, if that's not what they're interested in? So yeah. that speak for itself. But a little bit about my background. So uh, from the U.S., uh, born and raised, not born and raised, but pretty much I claim Texas, Houston, Texas. Um, went into the military, did about 12 years in there, did a tour in Iraq, got out, did IT work, uh, got into crypto early, got into Bitcoin, actually mining it <laughs> in IT in the military. We were mining it probably at that time illegally. I have no idea where those computers went. Yeah. Um, forgot about it. Tapped back into it in 2016, forgot about it again, came out here in Cambodia around the same time, and then jumped back in during DeFi summer, basically, and got rug pulled, got into every project known to man, you know, your portfolio is like 100 different things you got to check every day. Yeah. None of those did anything or went anywhere. <laughs> so I came across Drip around November, October, November of uh, 2021. Yep. from um zuvia's gym and i ignored it oh okay like, yeah, followed, yeah 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 okay. yeah I, I was like i followed this guy into other platforms and they didn't work out for me so i'm not coming back so i ignored it <laughs> until yeah. i saw until i saw jonathan building his youtube channel the drip farm at that time in january and i was like wait a minute here's a guy building the channel went to 10,000 subscribers in one month i like to teach and coach for a living you know health and fitness stuff like that i was like oh, i'm gonna document my journey let me go ahead and try that and then decided to do it with Drip because literally saw Jonathan do it. Ironically, uh -huh. though, I didn't sign up under Jonathan. I signed up under Juvier. <laughs> okay, gotcha. And I remember him. He was in pretty early. Like, he had a massive yeah. subscriber yeah. base for sure at the time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but okay. he's in everything. You know, a solid entrepreneur, solid business person. Uh, definitely a DeFi D-Gen. Jumps into a lot of plays. Has his own group and stuff like that. So he's done well. Yeah. But, uh, that just didn't work out so well for me. <laughs> But I started rocking with Drip at that stage due to, again, what I was seeing from the community, the engagement on YouTube, and then the, um, the, uh, the price, of course, at that time. So I got in in February. So just over 13 months now. I think this might actually be literally 13 months to the day. And um, basically the reason I've been sticking with it is because I listened. Before I even did any videos, I listened to all of Forex's AMAs. And I went through his entire Discord and read every single thread he had posted in his Discord from like 2018, 2019, when he called 
Ethereum, a shitcoin, and all this stuff. So mm. I followed this guy and read everything about him. I was like, okay, this guy looks and seems legit because clearly a project three years later couldn't be part of his mastermind plan to like, you know, rug the entire world. I mean, it could, but it just didn't add up, right? So I was like, okay, yeah. let me go ahead and rock with this and just find one project and stick with it. <clears throat> and, and that was pretty much, I guess, the drip journey. And from there, I just started... Um, trying to put out content, do the research, share the information as I found it yeah, and try to digest it in a way, I guess, that made sense. And over time kind of found my own voice in the space, I guess. No, I mean, and, and shout out to you because I think I kind of scrolling through because I like to do my research, make sure I understand the person that uh, we're having on as a special guest, like a massive achievement today, right? 60,000 plus watch hours, right? Isn't that a most recent accomplished? That's about seven years of content. I believe you wrote in your comments there's like that is massive. And anytime we do something of note, I go to this thing called soundbar, right? And you, and you got to get a clap because that's massive because you really haven't been in YouTube seven years, right? Has it been over a year yet or maybe a little over? Yeah. A year? Yeah. So just made a year. So like I said, I started my journey because of Jonathan over at Drip Farm. So yeah. literally day one of my drip uh getting into drip basically was february 8 2022 so yeah. i put out i think i'm at 745 videos in that time no and look can i can 764 right now 764 <laughs> videos my friend you are killing <laughs> the yeah. Well, you, game yeah and i try to it's not a virtue signal but i want to try to put out content that isn't just saying drips going to the moon tomorrow drip 100 dollars. i did some of that in the beginning because it does yeah the clicks yeah. But that for me just was disingenuous because when, again, you start looking at the numbers, you're like, wait a minute, man, I can't keep leading these people astray yeah. just so I can pump the bags of drip when clearly the numbers are telling me something different. Yeah. And see, and that's that's something I want to get into, man. Like, I've got a list of questions and, and you're kind of bringing them up. So we're just going to attach it. But I really want to make sure we get into 360 because I've been doing some research on that project and I think it is revolutionary in this space. So I want to make sure we carve out plenty of time to go through that. But let's let's kind of stay right there. Right. Because when I think about the number of YouTube videos that you have put out. Right. So we said 764 videos and and just under a year, right about a year and your deep passion for education. I just said this earlier to someone today and I said, man, when you think about a content creator, at some point you become an influencer and an influencer wields a mighty sword, right? You can drive people based on hopium to buy a whole bunch of nonsense and you can flip it on its head and give the opposite warning and force people to get out of a project. Right. And I said, personally, I don't prefer either because it's it's on opposite ends of the spectrum. I don't want to be extreme in any case. I want to be somewhere right in the middle and somewhere right in the middle is based on the data. And again, that's what you deliver. So let me ask you this. Why is it so important for you to like carve out your space right there in the middle versus somewhere on the opposite ends? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. So I think it, it comes down to something I put out in my video before, and I don't know if this was instilled in me from my parents or if it was the military or whatever, but it, it's basically living by a, a principle of values, right? So I've determined that I decided or um, allocated my time to say that my, my job is to live a, a life of values and principles, and that one of those values is integrity. So I guess also coming out here to Cambodia and seeing the... Uh, life in a third world country up close and personal it's like the only reason this exists in this disparity is because of just a lack of opportunity or access to like it's just basically a lack of education or information just not widely available yeah. so if that's the case then my job is to disseminate that information so that the person can decide i don't know if it's on my it. end and i'm sorry if i'm interrupting but i can't hear anybody Mo, so hey, let's check the levels. Mo, Tyler, NIC. Yeah, I can hear everything. So I think it's on, on your side, Rock. Okay. NYC, okay. Twitter Tyler, hates give me a I'll, thumbs I'll up. I'll get it. We'll try to come back up. Okay. Okay, we're good. All right, levels are good. 
All right. Yeah. So I, uh, to answer your question, I picked that middle ground because it's my job to actually just display the information as is. Like I put in one of my posts, it's like I call, I share the weather as is. I don't say if it's good or bad. If it's raining, it's fucking raining. <laughs> if it's sunny, it's sunny, right? You decide if you live in a desert and the sun is um, hateful or you right. decide the sun is good for you, right? Like that's not my job. So yeah. to answer your question, I, I color it right in the middle so that the person getting the information can make a decision based off of their personal goals or direction they want to go with their life right so yeah. that's why i've kind of taken that because that to me is what integrity is about it's doing the right thing when nobody's looking regardless of how you feel about the situation man that's a sound of money come on come on that's a sound of money. i love that i love that see and that leads me to this i know you've got a military background right but then there is this over emphasis on I don't necessarily refer to them as the poor, but I understand why people say that because it's so explicit. You know exactly what that means. But I would just call it like the underserved community, right? Where did that come from? Do you have like a humble beginning, like a backstory where you're really narrowly focused on, in using your words, empower the impoverished and create financial freedom through crypto assets and DeFi? <sighs> No, nah, ironically, like, um, come from a two family home. My dad was in the military. My mom was there. They raised me together. Yeah. Didn't struggle for anything. Um, we weren't rich. We weren't poor, you know, lived the typical medium family life in the U S. Um, yeah. So I never saw like, there was some gang violence and stuff when I grew up and whatnot, but we weren't in like, you know, Compton during the 1990s. So it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Understood. Um, yeah. I never had any real uh in your face issues with it but i think where it came to me was um like i said when i started traveling so i started okay. traveling and i went to countries like philippines thailand india you know and you start to see uh brazil you start to see the people there and you're like okay they're quote unquote living a life of poverty but yet they're also a lot happier and um joyful than some of these millionaires you know you got yeah. millionaires and billionaires putting bullets in their head because their life is uh, not meaningful. So obviously the money wasn't the issue, but I also saw people that wanted to change their circumstance and then couldn't because they just didn't have access to resources. There's a great uh, movie on, uh, I think it's on Netflix, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. And it's, okay. uh, yeah, that Af uh, African kid basically who built a windmill to save his tribe from a drought. And the only inspiration he had from that was seeing a windmill on the cover of a book yeah <laughs> so, that is unbelievable inspiration right, so right there jesus Christ. that that kind of um information or seeing that firsthand seeing what people can do it's like okay yeah it's just a lack of them being able to get access to this stuff so then i was like well let me see if i can be that person to provide that access and i feel like crypto is is the solution or DeFi specifically to get out of that fiat ponzi where even if they had the resources that they would lose that capital due to, you know, the way the current monetary system is. So crypto just seemed like the natural way and then educating people on it and finding a platform that's not going to steal their money was the, the only solution. Yeah. And it does seem like if people are paying attention and or made aware of it, more importantly, so let's back up the stuff. If they're made aware of it first and then if they're educated to help understand how to navigate on and off, it could become a great equalizer. It really exactly. could. You can make up for a ton of lost time and miscues financially if you understand cryptocurrency, right? Right. And I'm gonna lead that specifically into like drip. So I know that all of your content, I believe, is for X shark related projects, right? That's right. not a mistake. Okay, perfect. So 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 let me ask you this. So I know how you got into drip. Let me ask you why you said, I'ma just park my car, take the wheels off and just stay here and only support this ecosystem. What made you wanna lock in and support Forex? Uh, Cause like I said, when I went and read his discord and saw what he was about and what he's trying to build. And I think people actually don't understand him as, as a, a visionary and what he's trying to do. He's got his idiosyncrasies and things of that nature. But when you understand his principles and his values, and if you align with that, then it's a kind of no brainer to rock out with it. And then on the other side, it was again, kind of like a, a dig at some of the other content creators that just jumped ship and decide to just start shilling every other uh, project <laughs> once, once they use the drip community to get a following due to the algorithm. 
So I was yeah. like, I want to purposely not do that so I can be the only one in the space that can say, yo, I didn't do that. I followed this path. I knew you guys came to me for drip content. I'm not going to shove every other shit fork down your throat just so that I can make some money off of you. So right it's a on. kind of, again, it's a, it's an integrity thing, but it's also a bit of ego. <laughs> I'm not going to Got lie. it. Got it. Got <laughs> it. And, and that's good to know because here's what I want to ask you. Cause I, I think I saw a video earlier today where you're, you do, I think it's maybe either a weekly or a monthly uh, evaluation of your portfolio performance. Yeah, exactly. And, yep. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think let's just kind of call it what it is. When you went back and took a peek at your faucet performance year over year, you're down about 40%, right? Mm -hmm. So here's what I try to help people understand. And I'm curious to see how you approach it. Like when we think about introducing new investors, not the ones that are locked in, not the ones that are probably still have a toe in the water, but like new investors that are really looking to get into cryptocurrency and we're pushing them towards trip because of all the benefits we'll get to when they start to look at a chart or the price in action and, and maybe see sentiment that's less favorable. Like, what do you say to an investor to get in? Because again, you know how important cryptocurrency is and specifically trip. How do you navigate them from what they've heard and what they see to say, look, take a chance on this thing? Yeah, that's a good point. So I actually I do the opposite because I've even mentioned that in my my videos. I don't want to sell anyone anything that's going to cause them any kind of uh, negative impact, basically. Like we say, do your own research, not financial advice. But again, like you mentioned in the very beginning, the numbers don't lie. So yeah. I can't sell them a dream right now because there's no indicator that that dream is coming. Yes, we have things in development and I talk about that all the time, but until that's launched, I'm not gonna kind of like try to finagle people and say, yeah, go ahead and get in. So I don't actually even promote drip in a way to say now's a good time to get in or whatever. I tell people that when the date launches, when you hear Forex say, okay, on April 17th, we're gonna have the new UI launch. I think that's your indicator. That's where you yeah. start to take that time. And even if you miss 46 cents all the way up to 92 cents or a dollar, who cares? Because agreed, uh, came out at 275, three dollars. So you're getting below pre-sale prices. And again, statistically, any altcoin that drop below pre-sale prices doesn't survive, right? So if, Ooh, that's good if, to if, know. So, if, Ooh, that's good to it, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. So if we are able to do what we think we can do, any yeah. price below three to five dollars is still good. So yeah, I don't push it until there's a reversal or a clear indicator that Drip's going to do what everybody thinks and hopes it's going to do. Gotcha. Now, let me ask you this, because I, I love to get into this one, because, again, I've kind of introduced you a little bit to kind of how I think I play the middle. And again, it's just my education and my background. Um, never pull opposite on either end. How how? would <clears throat> constructive criticism be perceived in our ecosystem specifically, right? Let's not talk about anybody else's. Like in my observing, I'm realizing anytime you make a comment or suggestion that seems unflattering, it's considered um, soft foot. Right. And, and I'm yep. trying to figure out what's, what's the balance between constructive criticism in soft foot like can you not at all criticize any project yeah that's a great question so i, I again let the numbers speak for themselves so yeah if you look statistically at what i so i put out and people definitely say that yeah soft foot or whatever but you look at the amount of people that actually say that compared to the people that don't it's like 95 percent are in support of what i'm saying so yeah it's it's always the saying the squeakiest wheel gets the grease so you got a small handful of non-cognitively developed people that shout the loudest. <laughs> That's all I it really you. is. Yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately, yeah, I know you said keep it to drip, but it's actually more systemic than that. So if you ever heard the saying, uh, hard times create tough men, tough men create good times, good men, or good times create soft men and soft men create hard times. Yeah. We are in, uh -huh. a, in an era of soft men right now. And yeah. that's a lot of the ones that are in crypto. So they mm. get their feelings hurt because they can't articulate. They don't have the cognitive skills to talk sensibly. They didn't have to have any civil discourse like 
the Vietnam era men or my military background people. So yeah. they're they're soft, they're weak. That's just the yeah. way it is. Yeah. <laughs> so they're the ones that get upset when you call them on their bullshit with logic because they can't actually process the logic. So they just spout out with emotion. But again, That's it's a very small subset, right? So you just ignore them and speak to the other 90% that actually matter. That's how Man, soundbar, soundbar, my friend, soundbar. I tell you what, man, and here's the crazy part. It is difficult at times <clears throat> not to focus on the 10%. The 10% will actually, what I refer to as knock you off your square. It will force mm -hmm. you to lose focus. And you're forgetting about the other 90% that really enjoy your content and find value in the things you do and you say. So I, I really appreciate you telling me that because here's what I'm realizing. <clears throat> and again, and you'll, you'll appreciate this too, because my guess is, again, as an entrepreneur, you have customers and or clients and feedback is so critical to our success. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to operate thinking that they're doing everything right. Because in my experience, right. coach, Nothing on this planet is infallible. Nothing. Right. Everything has an opportunity to improve. And you know where you get that feedback from? Your client base. Exactly. Right? So yep. you have to be open-minded enough to at least listen to some of the feedback from the community. Right. So here's something I want to get your opinion on. It kind of leads me to the next thing, which is uh, the community at Broad. Um, conversations about Plinko and Triple D. And yep. you put out a poll uh, asking the community which one would they prefer. Right. And the results were overwhelmingly <laughs> triple D, right? Overwhelmingly, right, right. right? So let me ask you this. In your opinion, again, for anybody who's listening, uh, we're just having a conversation, right? Neither one of us, as far as I know, are behind the curtain with Forex Shark <laughs> no, cooking up the not. secret sauce, right? <laughs> None of us has inside. Of, we're just speculating. And we don't have access to the absolute truth and or story. All we're doing is hypothesizing. So allow us to do that, right? So my question is really simple. Overwhelmingly, the community was looking forward to Triple D. And it sounds like Plinko is going to be the next product that launches. Does it matter to you at all? Uh, how do you, I don't know how to load, uh, phrase that. What do you mean? Does it matter? Meaning the order. Um, yeah, in a, in a way, right? So you go back to this client that you were talking about and customers. So at the end of the day, and I made this uh, post as well, or a video uh, about the type of leadership that we have and the type of uh, personality of Forex. So he would be considered the CEO. So he's going to make decisions that he believes is in the best interest. And that may not always align with the board members or even the customers. Now, mm -hmm. like in your example, the, you said the client, when you have customers, normally you listen to them yes. and you do things that way. Yes. But, <laughs> but in DeFi and in this case, <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> and it's a double-edged sword because it is it ultimately is. where else are they going to go when every yeah. other platform is going to rug pull right so it's like you can you can kind of do what you want regardless yeah. of the sentiment and get away with it and at the end of the day everybody knows it's like okay yeah we trust forex he's got the uh, history da, 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 da. so it doesn't matter to me yes on that kind of virtue signaling integrity route where it's like give the people what they want yeah, what most of the most of the community has come here for. And I also know that you need to develop in a way that you build a foundation. But again, drip was the pillar of that foundation and the bulk of people got in and they made their money. So the ones that are happy in Animal Farm are, like I said in my last video, they pretty much got in to drip in 2021. Yeah. So they're printing in Animal Facts. Farm. Facts. <laughs> so they're yes. like, yeah, this is great. No problem. But Facts. there's an entire group of people that came in in 2022 that has seen nothing but sell pressure from, we'll call it February onward, right? So yes. a whole year and, and no attention on drip. Now, does that mean we should put the focus on drip? I mean, by that definition, yes, but what's the long-term play that Forex is trying to build? I yeah. heard somebody say that drip was basically a crowd fundraiser for the animal farm. That sounds Ooh. like the case. <laughs> Ooh, <wee. laughs> 
<laughs> Doesn't sound so good when you say it out loud. Oh God, it, it sounds <laughs> yeah. horrible when you say it that way. No, but, but in a way, point, it's, yeah, it's not that yeah. it's not that bad because, like, yeah. again, if you make money in drip, then you do want to park it somewhere where you're not at risk, right? So it does make sense. Drip is the bull run money printer, and then you don't want to lose it, so you take it and you park it, and that would be yes. a great place. So, so it's it's the right way. But yeah, it yes. just stings because you've been in for a year. But again, that's just the facts. Yes. <laughs> and and that's what I mean, Coach. Here's what I mean by that. So let's start back where you uh, mentioned before. You had to have hit and drip first to really appreciate the animal farm. And the right. majority of the people that are in now who are not part of the last bull cycle haven't hit. So mm -hmm. the focus is not really the animal farm. The focus is a thousand percent trip and i think you would agree that once people you know finally hit a bag whatever that is to them where they're able to take profits and then diversify and get into the animal farm i think that will then drive the animal farm awareness like that will then be the marketing that they need not the incremental money that they're planning on spending now to get people over to the animal farm in a bear market who's already risk adverse you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, start with your base, you know, pad their pockets, get them over to the animal farm, get the TBL up. Right. And start marketing. But what do I know? Again, I'm not behind the curtain. <laughs> you know, he's got a much bigger plan than what I can probably imagine. And his head, as I can imagine, is probably like three times as big as mine. But what do I know? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, look. So, let me ask you this. All right. Because I do want to get into your project nest. How do you feel about all the other projects within the ecosystem? Because I really want to get your thoughts because I've kind of heard some some feedback and I was like, why would he say that? But I just want you to tell me. So when we think about the community, I believe that's what makes us very special from most other DeFi communities in that right. people are willing to. I'm gonna change it up tonight. People are willing to get their drop in, right? People are putting their drops in. And so right. you got the Guardians of the Reservoir, phase one and two. You've got Megalotto, Hellhounds. You got Fee, the Res, and then now your project. Mm -hmm. Do you support those projects as well? I support them in the sense that uh, it's community driven. And I've mentioned that on my channel. Yes. I don't support them in the sense that I'm going to put my capital in or tell my uh, my viewers to put their capital in or whatever. I guess I don't really tell people to put capital in anything. Even in my project, I tell them that only if they're interested in health and fitness. Don't look at this yeah. as a get-rich-quick scheme. So um, probably where this comes from or rugs people the wrong way is because, again, I, originally I got into or I promoted uh, Monopoly money. That was a solo uh, Solana NFT that rugged. So that was my first time doing something to the drip community that didn't work. Then I promoted uh, DeFi proofs one uh, percent, mm -hmm. and that's a solid project, but it hasn't mm -hmm. done anything in regards to drip. Yeah. So I gave this analogy, and people don't like this, but that's exactly where we are in a risk-off environment. We are yeah. in a casino, right? Yeah. If all of us are the same people, and we walk in the casino, and the casino closes doors, nobody else is coming in. It's risk-off. The casino's closed. If we all sit down at the one table and start playing. And then money is exchanging. Some people are losing, some are winning, right? But the house is always taking a cut. Those are your gas fees. BNB always makes money. Then some of those players decide, hey, let's go over and open up the roulette table now. It's the same fucking money. <laughs> it, it doesn't make any sense. I understand. I understand. <laughs> right? So the only way all those players make more money is if we add other things to the casino. Why do you think casinos have restaurants and shops and retail and arcades? and swimming pools and spas because they know not everybody's going to come in and want to bet their paycheck. They yeah. got to get them to spend money somewhere else. But all that money from the somewhere else goes to the casino. So that's yeah. why when I say this, people are like, ah, he's against the project. It's like, no, I'm, a, I'm against just funneling money from one to the other because it's not adding any additional income to the platform. So I would rather, and this is what people don't understand. This is Forex's design as well. He's not a DJ. If you listen to anything he does, he's calculated, he's strategic. He makes fucking um, uh, trade signals and writes bots and three to five percent of his capital. And he's not going to make another algorithm or not going to make another uh, speculative trading coin. All these things are not DJ plays. Yeah. But people people misappropriate or think that 
by me saying, oh, I'm not going to be a DJ anymore, or I don't support any of this other stuff, they're just gambling. They're like, ah, he's against the other projects. Like, no, I just see the vision Forex is building, and that's why I want to build something that is in line with that vision. Meaning, it's bringing people from outside the DJ gambling space and the eventual adoption of massive crypto, it's bringing them in so that they can spend money and turn this magic internet money into something we actually use as a society globally. Thousand percent. See, and that's good. And here's what I wanted to do because I've heard the comment without the context. Does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. um, it was in a way that suggested, look, um, here's what I'm going to be doing, and it's true utility and uh, not recycling, like everything you said without the context. So on the surface, it could be perceived as soft footing, for lack of a better word, right? right and I understand right. what you're saying with, we're just kind of recycling the same dollar. Here's what I would say, here's what I would say. That is undisputed, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have some of the same people within the community, and it's very true when we think about uh, most of our videos and Twitter spaces, it's normally the same people that kind of show up, right? Right. So here's here's what I noticed as well. Part of it is to say, look, is this going to solve the macro problem? The answer is no, because the only one who's got the keys to this ignition is Ford Shark himself. And that's the utility that we're all kind of waiting on. Could it be, though, Coach, could it be this? Could it be a band-aid right where everyone is kind of bringing something innovative to the table that does a couple of things maybe improves overall sentiment right maybe comes up with the way to feed the rest to harden the drip price maybe with the nfts uh the way that you at least offer them has an opportunity to market to retail investors now we got this fresh capital in Right. So I think all we're really doing is kind of taking different bites at the same apple to really accomplish right. the goal. Right. So I just wanted to get your stance and your perspective on the statement. And again, it doesn't sound <laughs> like you're not supporting the projects. You just want people to understand that this may not be the long term play because currently we're kind of recycling the same dollars. Right. Potentially. Yeah, exactly. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. All right. So, so we're good. So we're good. So let's do this. Let's do this. Because let me see who is a speaker, because right now I think it's just uh, you and me. Okay, perfect. So let's do this. How about this? Because I want to pivot right into Change 360, if you're okay with that. Let's pivot yeah, sure. right into that. Yeah, because we talked about community-driven projects, and yours is going to be a big one as well. So Change is an acronym for something, right? Yes. Okay. I tried looking for it. I knew you did it on one of your videos. I couldn't find it fast enough, and I went through the website <laughs> and the white paper. I didn't fucking see it. So I was like, shit, I got to ask. I just have one comment on to what you guys said, because you're not wrong about the fact that it's being recycled, but that's a marketing problem, not necessarily a utility problem. Ooh, ooh. Mm. Rock. A thousand percent. Right? A thousand percent, because it's all about brand awareness. And who does that really come from? It comes from community members kind of doing their part right putting their drops in and that's you know social media having conversations friends and family and then in most cases you would expect at some point the dev team allocates a portion of revenue or profits to marketing specific now we already know that uh drip was behind the eight ball so there's literally no marketing dollars there it was all from forex so thank god that he at least did something but I think once there is a concentrated effort with a great marketing plan, not the stuff that we've seen so far, because let's be honest, that shit was not great. That was, you know, let's just throw some shit out there until we figure this thing out. Uh, it's got to improve. And uh, the only way that we get to fresh capital is through marketing. So I'm glad you chimed in. I think Drip Coast, anything you want to add there? Yeah. Just because Drip is community oriented, I think eventually there's going to be a marketing DAO that's created around it and they're gonna figure shit out well, i hope to be part of it <laughs> and yeah rock you need to be part of it because you've got great marketing ideas man right and that right. will that will launch everything and every side project sorry guys no rock that's the point that's the whole point
Coach, is there anything you wanted to add to that before you jumped into yeah. uh, Change 360? Yeah. No, no, definitely. I definitely agree that there's the, the marketing aspect that needs to be tackled for sure. It just, the point I'm getting at right now is in this bear market retail kind of aspect is how much marketing is going to get people into crypto right now. And again, the best marketing we know in crypto is a green chart. So how do, how do you get people outside with a sales funnel to open up their wallet and, and go through all the hurdles of learning and then come see the chart and decide to invest. So that's why I'm saying it's just you don't. money now. Right. You don't. So I don't yeah. see it changing in the short term. That's kind of what I'm getting at. But long term yeah. marketing is definitely the, the piece. I agree. You don't. You get the green chart and the green chart starts from your base, man. You got to get your base because we know that the base has money. Because we saw a nice little pump right around triple D. So yep. there's money out there. You just got to give us a reason to hold. You know what right. I'm saying? And then exactly. want to accumulate more. And right now, man, we're feeling like drip needs some more love. And so I'm saying drip needs more love. But hashtag drip needs more love. How about that? <laughs> All right. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Change 360. Let's get into it, my friend. Yeah, so you asked me uh, what the acronym stood for. So, um, yeah, I think I mentioned it in one video, but I yeah. really haven't, like, put it on anything. So you would have had to do some digging. I should have made an Easter egg for that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, man, because I went looking for it. Yeah. So it stands for uh, Continual Health Accountability Nutrition Guidance Expert. Okay. So it's basically just a because i have a health and fitness background a personal trainer that's that's what i was doing a lot of in the military and it well. sounds like your um, ass is doing it right now are you are you getting in reps or something while you talking yeah i'm actually at, yeah i'm at the gym <laughs> <laughs> yeah right on my friend right on <laughs> so um uh, so it comes from that background, and that's, uh, again, back to the Cambodian thing and me being out here and seeing, again, the need, uh, like I said, to educate people. But what I found is that even if you educate uh, the mindset, you know, there's the physicality portion. So you can't really develop a growth mindset until you've gone through some challenges that can help you kind of understand what to do when you face obstacles. And one of the best ways to do that is to challenge your body, right? You build the mind okay. through the body. You can also build the body through the mind, but that's more the meditative and stuff that people don't want to spend the time on. So it's harder. It's easier to, you know, pick up some weight, do a sprint, all that. Right. So yeah, for sure. um, that's where the platform kind of came from is that background and trying to figure out a way to blend this together. And ironically, this isn't something I just came up with, you know, two months ago. It's actually, I pitched it on my channel about eight months ago when i was trying to tie it to tom bill use impact theory nfts because i'm in his group and then okay. it came from an actual project i was working on out here in cambodia called fit pros when we went through covid where i was like oh shit, everybody is stuck mm -hmm. at home and yeah. they're not exercising and they got mental health issues it's like we need to blend different areas of wellness to actually help people you know get back on track yeah and that's kind of where this all started originally so this this project's about four years in development even prior to COVID with some meeting of people and stuff like that. And this just became the perfect opportunity due to having the drip community as that marketing vehicle and seeing the need and all the projects popping up to support the drip price. Got it. That's good. And somehow to your point, you're going to be having, I think it's what March 21st is your launch date. Yeah. So that's the crowdfunding launch date. So, Technically, we're bootstrapping this, and um, this NFT crowdfunding raise comes from Sidekick Finance, which is uh, a platform that actually took the crowdfunding model and decentralized it and turned it into NFTs. And there are also uh. some old school drip OGs in there. And that's the one place you can go to get the actual uh, DEX buy and sells as well. So okay. they've, they've been around for quite some time. But we're using that crowdfunding model to kind of pad the roadmap. So instead of doing the typical token raise, like make a token, and then using that to pad the roadmap, I decided to give utility up front and say, look, if you want to invest in this project, here's what you're going to get. Here's what the NFTs do. Here's also some additional utility on the NFTs. So if you like this style of utility, then you can invest in the project. And if not, you're not trying to just do a speculative token buy that's going to you're going to dump on the market later. Good point. And then you said you can actually earn points, I believe, the incentive yeah. based on the gamification. Okay. Got right. it. Right. 
Yeah, so back to your other statement about supporting community projects, stuff like that. So I understand that there is a need for the DGENs in the space, and I totally get that. And again, I wrote, wore that badge proudly for about the whole year producing content. But my mindset has shifted because I'm like, this is not going to build long term wealth. And statistically, it's not going to support the people that follow me. So if all of us are degens, <laughs> the average means most of us are going to lose and the winners win from the losers. So it's like, I can't, I can't do this with good integrity anymore. So yeah. I've, I put that model in though, however, with the lottery ticket type of sales, similar to what um, Triple D is doing is because I know there's a need for that, for people to scratch that itch. But in the version I'm doing, you can only participate in that when you purchase the actual utility. So the actual, um, one day meal plan or the actual fitness plan or whatever. So when you get the thing you wanted, it's kind of like going to the store and you get that receipt and then you can take their survey and you can get a free Coke or free French fry. It's like, yeah, yeah. you paid for the food. And now because you're going to give us this feedback on our product, we'll then turn that into a raffle. So that's how I'm kind of tying those two together. Sweet. Now, now why, and this is like the second project that, I've had on Twitter spaces that has a firm commitment on giving back to the drip community. Why? Like, why is that so important? <clears throat> well, it goes back to what I said before, because I know I built my channel based off of the sweat equity yeah. drip and the people coming to it. So I can't in good faith now build something and then just say, here's your 20%. I'm going to yeah. go get rich. Fuck yeah. you. Like that yeah. just makes no sense. Yeah. So, Cause it's a healthy it. contribution too, isn't it? Like you should yeah, let well, actually, know the mix. I mean, yeah. it is very healthy back to the ecosystem. It's extremely healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So there's 20% to the reservoir, 20% to the faucet, 10% going to the animal farm in which that will become a treasury where we'll yeah. vote and uh, do different allocations for that. So that will be community voted on as well. And then there's a 10% crowdfunding where that's community voted. So there's two different ways where the community gets to dictate where that money will go. And that's also, yeah, strip for the drip community initially, but I'm hoping to scale it and then be able to market to other communities and kind of build some healthy competition and then say, hey, you know, whoever community, uh, you guys could win the prize this month if you get the most votes or uh, mm. the most ticket allocations. And then it's, it's dynamic, but in the beginning, clearly, uh, Drip would be the loudest community because that's all I'm marketing to. So a good 60% of that. And then um, I forgot, 25% uh, goes to the actual uh, pay the, the raffle that we're doing. Yeah. And that's the um, referrals and the uh, raffle drawing. So that's split between those two. So 25% of that. And then the There's other some marketing remaining, and roadmap yeah something yeah yeah so five percent mm -hmm. goes to me and the other devs so that's uh, yeah. the small percent we're taking from it and actually these devs they're all drippers so two drippers actually the two devs i don't really know much about from the drip community but they've been watching my content and engage with me and stuff like that they don't have a channel or anything uh but pulled them in and then lasandro from the reservoir sit rep group he's the actual uh graphics designer so he's wow. been helping out the community for shit like well over a year putting his mm -hmm. brick in without without any you know getting anything back so i think we got a pretty good team that's aimed at the exact same thing and full disclaimer when i sat down with these guys um and i sat down and asked it's like this is what i learned in business i was like why are you really here what do you want from this project and i was like there's only <laughs> there's only one right answer and if you don't okay. have the right answer we're not going to work as a team and yeah. they kind of all hesitated and they're like of ah, course ah, you know yeah. right so went around the room and everybody answered. It's like, yeah, I want to make money. And I was like, okay, good. Now that yeah. our incentives are aligned, we're all here to make money. How do you want to make it? Do you want to make it by wrecking everybody else? Or do you want to make it in an honorable way where we can continue this project long term? Yeah. And I was like, and if we can align with that, then we got something, you know? That is phenomenal. I'm surprised at uh, how many people didn't say something like civil service or something morally right. right. And they and all That would have been a red flag for me. And they wouldn't have even known it. That was a red flag. <laughs> That is so good. That's the soundboard because I was not expecting that answer. Uh, again, that, that kind of separates, um, you know, like professional, traditional, professional environments where you've got to pick your words and your phrases properly to like maybe in a DJ space. Let me just be all the way transparent and honest about 
my intentions here, man, and, and see if that works exactly. for me. And it, yeah, and it sounds like honesty is the best approach. That's where I start. Oh, so, so let me ask you this. Um, let me see if I have any speakers because I want to – this is what I like to do, Coach, because we're right yep. at about an hour. Here's what I want to do. <clears throat> for all of our listeners, Coach is on with us talking about drip. Triple D, because I asked him about that one specifically, and then his project, Change 360, and he's also going to be giving uh, either curls or squat advice in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if anyone's got a question, bottom left-hand corner, here's an opportunity for you guys to uh, request to speak and uh, talk to him directly. So, Coach, we'll give people maybe uh, a couple seconds here to see if they want to chime in and say yeah. something to you specifically or ask you a question. And in the meantime, let me shout out some people just to get them some courage. Mo, Don Sepp, Crypto Mark, NYC, Mike, Dogman, DG, Sleeper, Todd, Lavelle, DeFi, Dialogue, Westside, I see you, Jax. Nino, Jason, Legacy, Wonder Woman. Welcome. Who do we have here? One great story. Welcome to the call. Max Penn, XRP. Who else we got here? Get Wealth or Die Trying. That's dope. I love that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. Emmett, welcome, my friend. DPMD. Tony, welcome to the call. All right. Double O Drip. Code Blue J. Let's see anybody. Man, come on now. We've got the man himself, Mr. Kanye West of DeFi. Nobody has any <laughs> questions. <laughs> Michael, welcome to the call, my friend. Uh, CDO63, I appreciate you. JC, my guy with a capital G, welcome. Louise, okay. So let's do this. Uh, cause I want you to get back. And those were like the high levels that I wanted to cover. Let me ask you this. Cause it was just kind of sitting in the back of my mind. Legacy. Um, when you think about your legacy and that's right on cue legacy as if we planned it, when you think about <laughs> your legacy within the creep drip ecosystem, what do you want people to remember about you? I know mm. it's not being a soft footer. I know it's not that shit. So we, we, <laughs> we can eliminate that right now. And I'm going to buy you some time because that's part of the reason, again, how I started. I was super deliberate about making certain I had you back on Twitter spaces because in my mind, I really felt like you were misunderstood. And the only person who could really tell your story was you. And um, part of it was... And I said this in a private group. It's like it's an acquired taste. Like when you when you first approach, you're not really sure how to take it. But if you slow it down and try to understand and appreciate the value that you deliver within your content, you will learn to like it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's the information that you need to cross cryptocurrency, life and traditional finance and wellness and fitness. People just got to slow it down, right, and give it a right. chance. And I said, let him speak for himself. And for anybody who's brave enough to ask a question and provide content or some type of insight, now's the time. Oh, shit. See, just like I was in church, you just want to buy people some time. You know, you just kind of <laughs> right. come on down to the space. Come on down. Come on down. We got Don Sepp. We got NYC. And we got JC. Okay. I'm going to do this. Don't don't jump in. Let me invite you guys. So first up was Don Sepp, and then we'll go with uh, NYC and then JC. Don Sepp, can you hear me? What's up, guys? How y'all feeling, man? How y'all feeling? Good, good, good. Yeah. Good. Um, I just wanted to say that um, uh, I jumped in a little late. I was in the gym, too, so I didn't even know that this was going on. <laughs> but um, right on, but then them <laughs> reps. Yeah, I'm trying to get in them reps like Jip Coach, man. But um. Can I say this? Can I say this? Whenever Drip explodes and go to the moon and we go to that destination with beach, ocean water, and sand, 
everybody's going to be flexing, trying to get in shape for that Facts. one. That's all I'm right, right. <laughs> Facts. I got to be. Everybody's going to be working out hard to get I in gotta shape I got to be cut out for that. That's going to be amazing. You know what I mean? It's going to be epic, um, man. I wanted, it's going to I wanted to say, though, um, honestly, I just wanted to give Drip Coach his flowers, man. I feel like definitely. Coach, do me a favor. Uh, put, put it on mute, Coach, in between oh, your bad. reps. Yeah, I, I definitely wanted to. Uh, yeah, let me go back to the phone. Yeah, he good. Um, I definitely wanted to give Drip Coach his flowers, man, because I feel like, like you said, definitely was misunderstood throughout that whole situation. I mean, if you watch his videos, you know, I don't know how people could say he's soft footing when his his stuff is based off of you know just telling it how it is, you know, and yeah, and just giving a different type of perspective. I love the education that he brings. So, and the and the it makes sense that he has an education background here and that because. It, it sounds like it, you know what I mean? Like the way that he's able to break and the military and ability, you know, like everything, that part everything too. does yeah. make sense now. <laughs> I really do get it. Um, totally. But um, yeah, man. So shout out to you and just continue just to continue, you know, doing the stuff that you do. I feel like you bring in a very unique perspective to this ecosystem, but it's a well needed one. I feel like when people watch your videos, they genuinely get to look at it through a whole different perspective. So, yeah, that's all I had to say. But I'm going to go back to eating dinner, though. <laughs> Right on, Dante. Get your protein <laughs> in, bro. Get your protein that. in. Appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks. Much love. Appreciate that. NYC. Yo. NYC. What's good, brother? What's going on, my brother? Hey, I'm yeah, I'm just here. You know, I'm always popping up in these spaces to show support. You know what I'm saying? Um 100%. so salute to the brother drip coach um sound bar sound bar sound bar gotta get the sound bar. hey yo because you kind of you kind of asked the question mid interview and i was wondering to myself i'm like yo is he working out because i heard somebody like breathing hard and i'm like what's going on <laughs> so he is working out yes he was. yeah my man was getting them reps in um salute to him but I think um, I think drip coaches is, is much needed in the community because a lot of um, a lot of influences out there is, is really um, it's all about that hype, you know what I'm saying? And, and drip coach, he come in and he give you that raw truth, you know what I'm saying? Smack in the face reality, um, and, and it's needed, you know what I'm saying? Because I agree. I'd rather go into a project educated, you know what I'm saying, and and knowing what I'm getting into um opposed to just jumping into something you know what i'm saying based off a of hype and and you know what i'm saying so respect to that brother you know what i mean because um at the end of the day i don't know about you know what i'm saying the rest of the community but me i'm, I'm part of a community you know what i'm saying right. i'm not really i'm not really with that model you know crypto's a solo sport you know what i'm saying because if that's the case then why why are you in a project that's community driven you know what yeah. i'm saying so Good point um soundbar soundbar baby soundbar yeah nothing but facts my brother nothing but facts so you know what i'm saying so when you come in you know when you come in from that perspective um you're gonna get a lot of you know what i'm saying you're gonna get a lot of side eyes because not not everybody wants to to deal with the truth one of one of the one of the hardest things we could do in life is is confront reality you know what i'm saying and yeah. and the the reality is that drip is a community driven project so you know what i'm saying so for me it's like I, that's what i support you know what i'm saying like if you are on my team if i'm building a team but i'm and then i'm saying that you know crypto is a solo sport like to me that's that's a that's a contradiction you know what i'm saying that's like mm -hmm. you know um i don't know what side you on you know what i'm saying like is you part of this community is, is you solo i don't know what you're doing but for me um i'm here to show support to to the members of the community that's that's actually trying to you know bring positivity and and you know what i'm saying and bring togetherness you know what i'm saying rather than um divide soundbar so, right on nyc right on that thing. Um, totally agree. i think i think that's that's the real change that 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 that's that needs to be made within the drip community you know what i'm saying we if we gonna march forward you know what i'm saying we're gonna do it together otherwise you know there's always going to be that that love and hate you know what i'm saying and agreed for me i'm all about the love because at the end of the day love love always conquers brother so thousand percent that's thousand what i'm percent. here for brother that's what i'm here for i appreciate that word nyc yeah. my god appreciate it as well G. 
Right on. Yeah, and uh, that, that just reminds me of that old African adage. You want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, go together. So hey. I'm with you 100%. Soundbar. Soundbar. All right, who else we got here? JC. All right, so let's get this done. Hey, guys. Uh, great session tonight. I want to say say that first foremost. Um, I actually, you guys make me make, make a, a new Twitter account. So, God, I don't know how many I have now, but... <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to <laughs> do that. Uh, right so you all know who I was when I was going to be, you know, bringing in a question. And DC, he knows that I'm always asking him questions on the side. And hopefully it gives him some some ideas for content and all that sort of stuff. Because sometimes, you know, I, I was a podcast host for five years myself. And I awesome. think I wrote like 260 blog posts during that time and all that. And I know how hard it can be when you're staring at the computer screen. It's like. What am I going to talk about today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, especially so, as much as he produces content, like two yeah, videos exactly, a day. dude. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. like I know he has a. You know, that was actually another question. It's like, you know, someone asked me, it's like, how far back is his his queue? You know, like three days or something like that. And I was like, man, I don't know, but you know, when it comes to comes to doing podcasts, I always try to have them out like at least two weeks or so. You know, so oh, okay. anyway. But no, so here's a here's a question for you guys. Um, you know, those, those of us who are, are taking advantage of Ray's recommendations and I, I've, I've warmed up to Ray a little bit as, as, as Triple D is, has come along. Um, one of the things that he's been saying recently though, is that, you know, um, those of us who have been around a while or, or not, it would make sense to get in at that 10 K level if you would and if you do get at that 10k level where you're looking at a max wallet before too long and so one of the questions that we've been talking about in our group uh that you're a part of ron is first of all you know what's what are you going to do with a max wallet because that's coming around but the other thing is what's your wallet strategy like for example there's some folks that are like one wallet at a the time. There's other folks that are like multiple wallets. You know, one of the guys that's in the group, Hex Noob. I don't know how many wallets he has at this point. I mean, it's probably 20 or so. Mm. And then there's there's people like myself that's somewhere in the middle that I'm, I'm focusing on one. And then I'm going to have two. And then I'm going to have four, you know, and yeah. just kind of trickle it down like that. Yeah. So anyway, just kind of that was something that, I, you know, I... I I think we're all starting to think about at this point and I agree. You know, just want to have your guys' input on that. So, no, that's go. good, JC, because I actually just asked that question not too long ago. So I'll be interested. Coach, you still there? And what do you have to say about that? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Did you hear the question from uh, JC? Yeah. So what's my wallet strategy and what am I going to do with uh, going forward? Max out wallet? Yeah. Because he was referencing uh, something that Ray said. Once you get to that magic number of 10K drip, then it makes it easier for you to maybe diversify into multiple wallets, which has sparked him to say, okay, like, what is an optimal wallet strategy? You know? Yeah. So that's a kind of a double edged sword loaded question kind of thing. Because I went in originally with the, um, the, the multi-wallet strategy from the Kelly Snook calculator. So I took my initial, like, uh, I forgot how much I had, about $1,000 and made five different wallets. And that's because at that time, it was like, oh, okay, yeah, drip is, you know, $130 or whatever. And I was a small correction. Everything was looking great. But now I would not do that. <laughs> so I would focus on one wallet at a time. And then, yeah, like Ray said, when you get to 10K, 20K or whatever, start taking some profits and start uh, airdropping to a second wallet. So I already have uh, four sub wallets under the one I built, but I'm not building them simultaneously. So like I, I hydrate like what, once a month on those or something like that. Yeah. And I'll just wait till this one maxes out. So when this maxes out, my goal is to pretty much like everybody else. And like I mentioned on this podcast or this uh, clip earlier is that, yeah, you then migrate over to the animal farm. So I'm going to try to, I don't even think it's profit taking at this stage or probably be a loss, but we'll see. But I would uh, allocate towards one airdropping to another wallet and two building a pig pen position. Cause again, I'd still believe in the foundation that poor X is building. So I would mm -hmm. try to keep the bulk of that in there. And what I'm currently doing now for profit taking, so to speak is what I mentioned on my channel as well is uh, 
hopefully taking that from the garden. So I know the garden is neglected, but if drip pumps, it's leverage, right? So it makes yeah. sense to take your leverage out. And that's also a overlooked strategy for triple D because you have drip you can sacrifice. You also have BUSD you can sacrifice coming from those garden LPs, but preferably coming from the actual farm. I wouldn't take it from the garden and then go throw it into a gambling um, dap. I would take it as profits, or if I had it sitting on the side, I would then use it to gamble with because you only get 28% right now APR for dogs. Got it. Let me ask you this. So are you saying you would split the uh, the LP pair and just take the BUSD to use that for triple Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So I mentioned this. If you have it sitting in the farm right now and you're trying yep. to get dogs from it, it's like 28%. So it's yep. not doing much. So sure. if, if it pumps or, or if you're not going to sell it and take profits from it, and it's sitting over in the farm, then it's kind of really doing nothing. So it's worth yeah, the gamble at that 30%. stage to break yeah. it apart and yeah. then try to play it in triple D. But if it's in your yeah. garden, don't do mm -hmm. that because you're just killing your garden and then literally going to gamble it away. Like that doesn't make any sense. Now, what would you do with the drip? I would probably sacrifice it. Like there's okay. no sense in trying to build a position on it, especially if drips like 50 cents. Like why would yeah. you try to build a position with 50 cent drip, right? It's like not nah, gamble it, you know, it's a lottery ticket. Understood. Okay, cool. JC, hopefully that helped, my friend. All right, we've got CB. Are you still there, my friend? Yes, sir. I'm here getting all the all the coaching and all the alpha. That's good. <laughs> That's my guy, CB, with a capital G. What's good, brother? Hey, much, hey, much. Um, <clears throat> just really wanted to come to, uh, to support uh, Drip Coach and you. You already know you have... I'm gonna be here always every Wednesday, like clockwork. My Even God. if I'm late, I could be the I could be the last five minutes. I'm in there. And I'm sharing. <laughs> I need everybody here to be sharing too. All I see is like six comments. Like, come on now. Yeah. Um, so listen, I really just wanted to say, man, shout out to Drip Coach. I saw the video and I and I it was it, it was heartwarming because I'm seeing the people are trying to get away from that DJ mentality because if we want to get to another level, we have to start thinking strategy, you know, militant, however you want to feel, but you have to have a certain type of movement. Um, shout out to NYC crypto too. And, uh, I just wanted to say also on that, on the, on the fact of the team and solo, uh, the thing is, I think is it's, I think it's both. I think you have to move as a community, but you do you like stop looking at every little people's pockets stop looking at other people's wallets stop, stop looking at what they bought to eat like you know at the end of the day we're in a team sure because if we're on a baseball team we're on a baseball team but we're not marrying the same wife we're not having you know the same position in the in, in the game etc so it's like yes of course we're a team and we move together and loyalty is important and don't try to you know don't try to throw your man under the bus like drip coach to say and we've been there trust me so i know what it is <laughs> a guy that actually dedicates himself i will be mad if the community is mad at me you know i'm not called drip cv but somebody that dedicates his, himself and his channel and everything all around drip and supports drip and then you just hear one thing and you don't you don't sit down and listen like you said slow down for me that's a disrespect like so let's slow down let's see what the brother has to say sometimes we can get value out of it most of the time because it's drip coach one yes his name is drip coach he's coaching right and then, you, know, you feel me no, and on top of that, how about if the, you know, what, what he has to say could save everybody. Like one little thing, one sentence maybe in that whole 15 minute video, 30 minute video, whatever it is, could probably, you know, spark up some some bulbs and get more project going and all that. So I'm just here to say I support y'all and y'all already know I'm with it. I'm with it. Y'all lit. Right on TV. Hey, and congratulations, man. I just looked at the TVL. One million dollars for Droplet. Soundbar, my friend. Soundbar. I appreciate it. Trip coach, let me ask you this, my friend. Anything you want to say to the speakers or the listeners? Uh, yeah, first and foremost, coach, uh, thanks for having me on here and thanks for you guys' support and engagement. And um, it kind of goes back to what you, you mentioned right before this. You asked what was my legacy, what I want my legacy to be. And that ties into a question you asked earlier before. Um, reference those uh, people that seem to complain or have issues or whatever. And I don't know if you're familiar with Prado's principle, but basically it's the 80-20 rule. So in business, yeah. you're going to find out that 80% of your profits come from 20% of your customers. And you're 100%. also going to find that 80% of your problems come from 20% of your customers. So this is the exact <laughs> same way. 
and this is a thing they've, they've learned all throughout nature and stuff. 80, 20, it's pretty much there everywhere. Right. It's a great yeah. book. You should read it. But um, essentially, that's what's happening in the drip community. You got 20 percent. I said 10, but we'll go with Prado's principle. He's smarter than me. 20 percent yeah. of people that are, you know, upset and in arms with the content I produce. But the overwhelming majority understands it. And again, if what I'm putting out doesn't have any value, then they wouldn't watch. And I made this comment before on my channel, probably about six months ago, of telling people to stop supporting people who are getting them wrecked. And then when yeah. you look at the stats, I'm not going to call out any names, but you yeah. can see some channels have less viewer engagement. I wonder yeah. why, right? Yeah. Because the people start to wise up and make the decisions that they think supports them best. So, yeah, I've decided to keep this moniker of Drip Coach, and I'm going to call it like it is, you know, and give you both the, the positive and the negative. I can be a hype boy and spin everything, but that doesn't do any good for people trying to make sound decisions. So the no. legacy I want to leave, your question you asked, is someone who basically uh, had integrity and spoke his truth unapologetically, I guess. Is all oh, I'm for. sound bar. Oh, that is what I'm talking about, Drip Coach. That's Yo, can I how that? you blast off March, my friend. Go ahead, CB. Can I add to that? I'm going to hit the gym right now, too. I wish I had a camera. Listen. I'm telling you, man, that beach is going to be crazy. I'm, I'm telling, telling you, bro, it's going to be crazy. Listen, I heard the machine. He was like, let's go right now. I was going to go a little <laughs> later, but listen, though, um, I'm going I'm to just leave with this. Michael Jordan, LeBron, Kobe, Shaq, I'm pretty sure all of them argued with their, with their coaches. I'm pretty sure at some point they argued with their coaches a lot. So they just probably didn't see the vision of the coach and how they could win the championships, you know, because it's, it's, sometimes it's not only the players, that coach be having that vision and, and knows where your weaknesses and your strengths are and all that. So yes. we just listen, we just got to hear it out. Let's, let's come up with a game plan and let's all play the same game. But, you know, like, just <laughs> team player, I guess. You have to be a team player, man. That's a it. thousand percent, especially if you call yourself a community. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. If you're not going to do nothing and no content and you're not doing something like drip coach, just be a team player. Listen to the yeah. coach. He's leaving, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, I like you real quick. I like that that coach analogy from that because my coach called out the bullshit whenever we weren't performing well. So if you were mm -hmm. the star player and you weren't hitting the shots and you weren't doing what you're supposed to do, he told everybody in front of everybody. And then he also had a pep talk with you on the side or whatever. But he didn't just babysit you and tell you what you wanted to hear. He helped you become that's better. Cool. And that's that's the that's main thing. Cool. Yeah. And and that's the distinction that people have to realize. It truly is a phrase, right? It is constructive criticism. And it typically comes from people who care. Right? Amen. It comes from Amen. people who care. And if you've not watched this content, if you haven't been listening to this Twitter spaces, you really don't have a pulse, right? This guy is telling you that he cares. And all the discipline that he provides within his content comes from his background, right? He's an educator and a military person, and he delivers it like he sees it. And for some people, it's an acquired taste, but his heart and his mind and his influence is in the right place, right? Because when I think about Futters at its core, Futters at its core, so don't ever fucking refer to him as that, Futters at its core are people that look to spread misinformation, emphasis on the word misinformation to make people doubt the safety and integrity of a project. Amen. He does none of that stuff. There's no misinformation, man. None of it. It is all backed by the blockchain and he's showing you the source of this information. He's Amen. just trying to make certain you guys Find a way to D-Y-O-R. Do your own research so that you can stop being led by content creators and influencers. That you can actually put this information in your toolbox and start making informed decisions on your own. That's how you get past the finish line. You have to become self-sufficient and learn to make decisions on its own merit and by your own choice and by your own fundamentals. That's what the coach provides, all right? So coach, my man, I appreciate you coming back on the show, brother. It was glad to have you, man. Good to have you, that's all I gotta say. Yeah, thanks, appreciate you having me as well. It's been fun, for sure. Now, do you wanna send them out like you normally do on your YouTube <laughs> video, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, 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 before you before you say that outro, look, I'm in the gym so y'all can hear it. Y'all don't think I'm capping. Hear them winks. Hear them winks. <laughs>
You feel me? Because people think we cap. We never cap. You heard? Jip right. Coach, shout yeah. out to you, man. Right. Stop yeah, curling with those it. five pounds. Pick up some real weight. Pick up some real weight. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Coach, send him out. Send him out, my friend. Send him out. <laughs> yeah, you guys out there, lift daily and achieve your impossible, man. Be easy. My man, be easy. Thanks, Drip Coach. I appreciate you. To all my speakers and listeners, you know how we do it every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, Twitter Spaces with Kryptonite, a.k.a. Drip to Wealth. I wish you all peace and prosperity. We are out. Want to pay your in-real-life bills with crypto? How about send crypto directly to anyone with a bank account? Spritz Finance is a decentralized solution to be your own bank and connect your crypto earnings to real world bills and payments. They do not take custody of your assets and allow support on multiple blockchains and Web3 wallets. Sign up below using my referral link and you will get $50 back when you make your first $50 bill payment with crypto. Additionally, I will be using referral bonuses to airdrop, donate, or burn based on community feedback. Sign up now.